Um, we are here with parents of Village Youth, and we are super pumped for today's guest. Uh, and we're just really excited because our hope with all of this is that we can be a resource for you as parents. Because we know that uh, parenting is hard, but it's also the, one of the most important things that we do. Um, and so we just want to, as a church and as a youth ministry, walk alongside you, give you resources, cheer you on, encourage you. Um, and we're really excited to do some of that today. I'm here with my sidekick, Olivia. Hello. And we're going to be interviewing our special guest today, Dr. Michelle Fiscus. Which Hello. We're super pumped about. If you can't tell, she is from the Tennessee Health Department. And she's going to be talking to us today a little bit about trends uh, in teen culture, along with uh, jeweling, uh, tobacco use. I'm excited to be here. So tell us a little bit about who you are and how you ended up at the Tennessee Health Department. Sure. So I'm a pediatrician by training. I, w I have practiced in uh, Franklin for about 17 years. And then a couple of years ago, uh, needed a change and decided to go to the State Department of Health. And I'm the Deputy Medical Director of the Division of Family Health and Wellness there, which is a super long title. Um, your business starts like that long. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> and so um, I basically work with state programs around chronic disease prevention, health promotion, which includes tobacco, um, getting rid of tobacco in the state of Tennessee, um, but then also our death reviews, so child death reviews and um, maternal death reviews, suicide prevention, motor vehicle injury prevention, uh, all the things. All the things. Yeah. Health. Yes, health. Yeah. Um, the Department of Health. Yes, all the health things. Um, there's lots of other health things that I yeah. do not do, but uh, this uh, tobacco was a particular passion of mine. It's kind of in my DNA as a pediatrician to stop kids from killing themselves. Yeah. And um, so this, I mean, when you think about health crises that have happened, I mean, I can't think of a bigger health crisis amongst teens than what we're dealing with right now with millions and millions and millions of kids down to middle school age who are now using nicotine yep. containing products and it's a huge problem. So thank you for tuning in and We're thank you for having us yeah, um, so awesome. that we can talk a little bit more about kind of the evolution of that and yeah. um, awareness around that issue. Yeah, no, we are super excited. And I know she's got a little bit of a presentation for us to kind of walk us through what is really happening. Um, what are some of the stats? What are we seeing in schools? Um, and I can tell you from my experience in going into the schools, this is a thing. So we're talking with administrators and principals. Uh, one of our local high schools brought you in recently because of this. Uh, this is a, kind of an underground, but not even underground epidemic right now. Uh, so yeah. we really want to talk through some of what that is. That's yeah. well above ground at, at, yeah. at this point. So, um, so yeah. And teenagers are not as sneaky as they might think. <laughs> right. Um, although, unfortunately, a lot of adults are super unaware. Yes, so, that is true. Um, so but that's, that's why that's, we're here. That's right. That's why we're here to do this. So. Um, so, you know, what, what I want folks to understand is that kids have been the target of the tobacco industry for decades. Uh, this is not something new. And so, um, back in 1981, one of the marketing firms that was working with one of the large tobacco companies actually wrote, quote, It is important to know as much as possible about teenage smoking patterns and attitudes. Today's teenager is tomorrow's potential regular customer. And the overwhelming majority of smokers first begin to smoke while in their teens. And we know that 90% of adult smokers who smoke every day started using tobacco before the age of 21. Mm. And about 80, 85% of them started before the age of 18. So if we can just keep our kids off of these products, the chance of them becoming adult daily users is actually really small. Mm. Um, but unfortunately, we've got a lot of bad stuff going around right now. So there's a survey that's done called the Youth Risk Behavior Survey, which comes out every other year. And um, Tennessee is a state that participates in that. It's a national survey. And we survey our high schoolers um, every other year and get lots of information about their diet and their sleeping patterns and whether or not they wear their seat belts and things like that. And we also ask a lot of questions about tobacco. And so uh, when we look at these data here that go back to 2003, we can see that we've made a lot of headway around tobacco use in our kids. And so this is Tennessee, Tennessee's trend around tobacco um, smoking in high school. And so from 20, 2003 to 2017, the, um, the number of kids that have um, used, ever tried cigarette smoking dropped by half, which was huge. Um, and then the number of cigarettes uh, or the number of kids who smoke cigarettes um, currently, which is just once in the last 30 days, dropped 
to about a third of what it was. Right. Um, the kids who are smoking 20 out of 30 days is below 3% now, and the kids that are smoking every day is at about 2%. And those numbers are actually better than yeah. a lot of the national numbers, yeah. which, you know, for Tennessee to be yeah. better than the national yeah. numbers on something health related is, is a little bit of a rarity. So, um, so this is great. But then, you know, a few years ago, we started to have this trouble with electronic cigarettes. Yep. And the industry started this as a, you know, quote, harm reduction or, or cessation product for adults. But in fact, that is not what has happened with this product. So we are kind of right back to where we were. And the problem with the kids is that they are hugely misinformed about what these products do and what these products are composed of. So right off the bat, the term vaping is just a misnomer. So vapor, if you know anything about chemistry, which doctors have to know, <laughs> um, vapor means like a gaseous state of water. So if you have water vapor, then when it condenses back down, all you should get is water. And But in fact, what these products provide is an aerosol. And so what an aerosol does is has has all kinds of kinds of stuff suspended in it. Mm -hmm. And so these kids aren't vaping. They think that they're um, inhaling flavored water vapor, but in fact, they're inhaling flavored aerosol. And that aerosol contains things that cause cancer. It contains heavy metals like nickel and lead and cadmium. It contains ultra fine particles that get way down into the very small airways in the lung. Mm. Um, there's nicotine in almost all of these products. And, um, and then there's this really interesting thing called diacetyl, which is a flavoring that is put into these products. And um, what has happened with that is, is something called popcorn lung. Um, which doesn't mean that your lungs start to look like popcorn, but what happened is that um, there's a microwave popcorn factory and diacetyl is the chemical that's used to flavor the microwave popcorn. And so the workers who are working in these factories, when that diacetyl product hit heat and then aerosolized, they were breathing this in day in and day out while they were working in the factory. Mm -hmm. And as a result of that, they developed a condition called bronchiolitis obliterans, which sounds scary because it is scary. <laughs> but basically, the bronchioles, quick like anatomy lesson, the bronchioles are the, the really small airways out in the periphery of the lungs. So not the air sacs, the alveoli, which is where emphysema lives, mm -hmm. but the ones right before that. And so it basically obliterates these. It turns them into mush so that they don't work. And if they can't carry oxygen from your environment into your body, into your organs, and then help you expel carbon dioxide, then you know you die a slow and miserable death. And so mm -hmm. what happened was these workers sued the popcorn companies. Uh, one of them won a $7 million judgment. But this is the exact same chemical that's being used to flavor electronic cigarette products. Mm -hmm. And these guys weren't inhaling this on purpose. It was just being inhaled as, as, a, a, work, uh, yeah, yeah. as a work exposure. And now we have kids that are inhaling this on purpose. And we have no idea how quickly this condition will happen or um, when it will happen or if it will happen. But it's, it's extraordinarily mm -hmm. scary to think that we could have middle schoolers who are well on their way to having chronic lung disease um, at per perhaps a very early age. Um, one of the other things for parents to understand especially is that nicotine acts very differently on the child or the adolescent brain than it does on the adult brain. So case in point is uh, 21 Jump Street Johnny Depp on yes. the left versus um, more contemporary, <laughs> say Pirates of the Caribbean, yeah. Johnny Depp on the right. He has not aged super well, by the way, um, largely maybe because of tobacco use. <laughs> um, but when, when an adult takes a hit off of a cigarette, I think everyone has probably seen they, and they relax, right? And that's, that's what they do. They, they need it and it helps them relax. Kids get amped up on nicotine. Mm -hmm. So it's not something that relaxes them. It's something that excites them. It's something that makes them feel like they have more energy. Um, and so that's part of the attraction to that. And kid brains are a lot more sensitive to the rewarding aspects of nicotine than what adults are. And they can also tolerate huge doses of nicotine that adults would find really um, uh, objectionable to use the kinds of doses of nicotine that we're seeing the kids use because their brains are just wired differently in how they respond. Um, and in kids, nicotine is 
very much a gateway drug. So we know that if kids are using nicotine, they're more likely to then use alcohol, to use meth, to use cocaine, to use heroin. Um, whereas adults don't use nicotine in that way. Um, there is not considered a gateway drug in adults. The one possibly positive thing that we have is that kids don't experience withdrawal as badly as adults do. <laughs> so obviously, you know, goal one is not to get kids hooked to begin with. Right, sure. But at least we have a little better chance of getting them off nicotine once they are addicted than what we might have with the adult population. So um, just kind of some general things. What's in an e-cigarette? So um, this is a picture of Blue, which was one of the first ones that came out. You might remember the Jenny McCarthy commercials. So, you know, well, don't immunize your children, says Jenny McCarthy. Please do smoke electronic cigarettes. <laughs> um, just and, good life advice. Yeah, exactly. Because um, why not? Um, so they all have a battery of some kind. Um, many of those batteries have been shown to explode and injure people, catch them on fire. Um, they have an atomizer that, that's the part that aerosolizes the liquid nicotine. They have either a cartridge or a little holding tank for um, e-juice or nicotine juice, which is just a terrible term, nicotine. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, and then all of that mushes together to make some kind of electric cigarette product. And they come in all kinds of different styles and designs. They, they look like... Um, Markers, uh, some of them look like Sharpie pens, and then on the right there are kind of these tank devices that you often see people holding, especially the, the more 20s, 30s, yeah. 40s year olds mm -hmm. will use these tank devices. The kids tend to use the slicker, sleeker, um, easier to hide devices. And they have lots of different names. So when we kind of go back to the history of tobacco in America, back in the 70s, Congress finally figured out that tobacco was probably bad. <laughs> and especially for kids, and that they should stop broadcasting um, tobacco ads on television. And back in the 60s, they actually had Fred Flintstone marketing tobacco uh, as part of the, the Flintstones cartoons. So um, all of that went away. It took them about 15 years to ban advertising on chewed tobacco. Um, and then in 1998, there was this thing called the Master Settlement Agreement. And what the Master Settlement Agreement did was create a, an agreement between certain states that opted into it, Tennessee being one, and the tobacco companies. And so in exchange for the state saying, we won't let people sue you over being killed by tobacco, we'll give the states a whole bunch of money. And so since 1998, Tennessee has received three trillion, with a T, mm -hmm. trillion dollars. I know, yeah, Shalom. Shalom had a, a comment about that. <laughs> three trillion dollars from the tobacco companies since 1998 um, as a result of this master settlement agreement. And that's why tobacco companies don't get sued for tobacco. Um, and also interestingly, it created something called preemption in some states, including Tennessee, which is an agreement that none of the local jurisdictions can pass any kind of local ordinances around tobacco. So if your church wanted to say, we don't want smoking on our church property outside, you wouldn't be able to do that and be able to enforce it right. by law. You can make a voluntary policy and ask people not to smoke, but in order to make your church a smoke-free campus, your church would actually have to have a bill introduced to the state legislature that would go through both houses and be signed by the governor. Um, so there are very few places in Tennessee that have that kind of protection. One is the Assembly uh, Theater in Nashville. Mm -hmm. When it was built, they made that, that tobacco-free. Yeah, uh, the Dogwood Amphitheater in Cookville recently um, got that status. The uh, Aquatic Center up in Kingsport, and then last year, thankfully, um, there was legislation introduced in the state to allow state-owned um, institutions of higher learning, so colleges, technical schools, mm -hmm. to have enforceable campus-wide tobacco-free policies if their board of regents mm -hmm. wanted that. To which was a great thing. Yeah. So now, I know Jan, I think January 1st, um, UTC becomes a tobacco-free campus. I'm pretty sure UT Knox already is. Um, and so most of the um, school campuses of higher education across the state have more than what state law wow. allows yeah. them to, to do. So that was really important. Um, in 2009, um, flavors of cigarettes were banned. So it wasn't actually that long ago that they took the flavors out of cigarettes. Interestingly, though, menthol was not banned. And if you know anything about menthol, you know that 
menthol is preferred um, by smokers in the African-American community. So it's really interesting that menthol was not banned um, because those cigarettes are targeted at a community that already faces lots of health disparities. Yeah. And so that was left in place. Um, and if you're interested in learning more about that, there's a really interesting documentary called Black Lungs, Black Lives that's on YouTube by a great young documentary, documentarian named Lincoln Mundy. And it's about 15 minutes long, it's really interesting, and talks about how tobacco industry money has its fingers in even things like the Congressional Black Caucus mm -hmm. on the federal level. Wow. Um, so it's very interesting history. Yeah. So um, another comment back in 1972 from the tobacco company marketing folks was that it's a well-known fact that teenagers like sweet products honey might be considered. <laughs> so it uh, has been decades that they have been working to, um, to hook kids on these products. And they have to because their customers are dying, right? So they have and to. Based on those stats, yeah. if they don't get them hooked as a kid, that's right. it's very yeah. unlikely to do it later. That's exactly yeah. right. So they, they have to find kids. And so now we have um, apps that are clearly targeted at children. This is um, Jewel, which we'll dive into uh, a little bit more in a few minutes. Um, with these flavors that are available, mango, cool mint, fruit medley, creme brulee, oh yeah, and then there's a tobacco flavor. Um, I have always said that it is not the 40-something-year-old account executive in his corner office trying to get off cigarettes who is smoking his creme brulee um, jewel. And these, these devices are targeting at kids and young women. So um, now we have all of these flavors and there's absolutely no ban on any of them. Now, just last month, uh, the commissioner of the FDA, Scott Buffy, has asked for a ban on flavors on these products if they're sold where kids could have access to them. So convenience stores, gas stations, yeah. they would still be available in over 21 type yeah. establishments. Yeah. They would still yeah. be yeah. available yeah. online. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but it's a start. And then also um, looking at asking for a ban on menthol in cigarettes, mm -hmm. which would be yeah. great. Yeah. Yeah. So um, this is just some of the flavors that we've seen over the years. Um, I remember, chicken yeah, chicken and waffles are right. incredibly yeah. disturbing. Yeah. Um, I, I, I'm not the sure. The bubblegum one, I've actually walked by somebody with that one. With the chicken and waffles? No, with the bubblegum one. Oh, the bubblegum one. Oh, the, bubble one. The, the boom boom pops up in the corner. I remember when the ice cream truck used to come down my street that he would sell boom boom pops that looked just like that. Um, it's no wonder that kids are attracted to yeah. these things. They've been conditioned. Um, cookies, flavors, I mean, there's, there's all kinds of reasons for kids to be interested in this. And up until recently, kids were able to get these products online 94% of the time when they tried. And people were, you know, well, how is that? Well, you go on and falsify your birthday, right? So you go online. Yeah, put that together. Um, even yesterday, I was, I was on um, just looking at different pages for some of the knockoff products that are coming out. And it, it is still, are you a legal purchasing? Yep. Um, so really easy to, to buy them. And, and then they think, well, how do they do that? Well, okay, you just gave your kid a Visa gift card for Christmas yeah. because you didn't know what to get them. They go on jewel.com and buy their, their starter kit for under 50 bucks. So, mm -hmm. And they got exactly, <laughs> exactly what they wanted. Exactly what they wanted, right. The gift that keeps on giving. <laughs> So, so now this is where we are. So this is a, a nice graphic that CDC yeah. put out. And so in 2016, more than 2 million middle and high school students were using electronic cigarette products. That number has probably doubled from 2016 to so, now. Yeah. Um, in 2016, it was more than one out of 10 high school students and about 4% of middle school students. And most of these kids know not to smoke. We've done a very good job as parents in educating our kids not to smoke. But they don't think this is smoking, which yep. is, you know, so we've right. got a, well, a basic marketing. semantics yep. problem here. They're just vaping. They're vaping. It's just air. Um, I always find it interesting that kids will say, oh, there's nothing wrong with it. It's not harmful, but they hi they know to hide it. So that's always <laughs> of an interesting contradiction. Yeah, yeah contradiction. <laughs> um, so the interesting thing is that, so the, the, the vape shop industry, um, they will tell you that they're providing a service to adults that want to quit tobacco. Mm -hmm. yes. um, and there are those anecdotal stories of adults who successfully quit tobacco and then quit their electronic nicotine product. But when we look at the data, it's only 3% of adults who have ever used an electronic product. Mm -hmm. 
and more than 50% um, of them are still using cigarettes at the same time. So that is contributing to their nic nicotine addiction, not stopping. Yep. So now they can vape inside in Tennessee, because it's not included in the Non-Smokers Protection Act, right, yeah. and then they can use their cigarettes yeah. outside. I have noticed a lot of signs that have said, and it's like tacked on. Or or vaping. Vaping. Or vaping. It means All. the same thing. Yes. The All, yeah. yes, means the same thing. <laughs> so, um, but it's important to notice 3.2% of adults 4.3% of middle schoolers, 3.2% of adults. Mm -hmm. um, that's a really important take home message that the, we're talking about 15% of kids in middle and high school versus 3% of adults. This product is not helping people. It's, it's causing a whole new generation of addicts. So I wanted to talk a little bit about Juul specifically. And if you're not aware or familiar with Juul, um, this, is the, this is the go to device for um, most of the kids in middle and high school. It, um, it has a little USB charger that you can stick into your USB port on your computer, your laptop, or put into your wall socket uh, USB charger. And then um, this guy right here is what you actually vape off of. And you plug in one of these Juul pods, which has the flavor into the end of that. This Juul starter kit, Vaping Made Easy, comes with a four pack of different flavors and a device, and that's less than $50 to buy online. So. This, just like other e-cigarettes, has a device with a rechargeable battery and then this jewel pod that you purchase and plug into the end of this. Uh, it has a cover so that you know what flavor you're getting ready to try to kill yourself with. And, um, and then it has a little chimney. And the interesting thing is, you know, if, if you're riding in a car, you can tell if someone is vaping in front of you because you see this quick <laughs> mushroom cloud like a billowing of way more aerosol, yeah. way more than cigarettes, right? Juul is not like that. Juul puts out a very little amount of aerosol. And so kids are actually using these in class. Yep. They, um, they sell t-shirts that have a little pocket at the collar where you can put your device or the girls will stick it in the top of their bra or in their bra strap. Yep. And then they'll um, puff it in class and exhale into their shirt. And it's, it's a small enough amount um, that it's not really detectable. Yep. Um, and then they're smart. If the teacher walks by and it's, oh, what's that smell? Oh, and so and so, I just used my hand sanitizer, um, which, you know, if they're smart, they'll buy the same flavor. So um, a four pack of Juul Pods is cheaper than buying a four pack of cigarettes in the state of Tennessee. We have one of the lowest tobacco taxes per pack at 62 cents. Um, these devices do um, have to, do, do get charged the tobacco tax. Um, for comparison, New York City passed a $13 a pack tobacco tax. There's not a lot of kids in New York City who are purchasing their own tobacco products at this point. Mm -hmm. But at 62 cents in Tennessee, um, that's it's very much within reach of our kids. I have friends that have stopped smoking when they moved because it was too, it was too right. expensive. They too expensive. Like pay their rent because of it. So yeah. wouldn't that be fantastic? <laughs> yeah. And interesting, those states that have low cigarette taxes have much higher rates of smoking than states that have high cigarette taxes. Huh. <laughs> <laughs> <Matt>. Coincidence? <laughs> um, so what is in this Juul pod? So there's nicotine. So the kids will say, oh, there's no nicotine in the Juul I use. That is a flat out lie or misunderstanding, depending on how you want to think about it. Um, every Juul pod has nicotine in it at all. It's the same amount of nicotine. Um, there's benzoic acid, which is a component that's put in this to reduce the harshness um, because this provides a wallop of nicotine that is really unpleasant. But if you put benzoic acid in there, it kind of soothes the throat and you don't have that much trouble. So it allows for kids to tolerate um, this level of nicotine. There's glycerol and propylene glycol. That's what makes the cloud. Um, these are oil-based products. Um, and they'll tell you that they're food grade. Well, food grade means eating, not breathing. Um, Don't breathe in all Depositing of oil into your lungs, probably not a good idea. Now, there's natural oils, because natural oils, I guess, also not meant to be inhaled into your mm -hmm. lungs. And that's very big. And very big, yes. Um, and then there's other stuff and flavors. And so 71% um, of the total electronic cigarette market is Juul. Uh, they had a 641% increase in sales in one year. If I could develop a product that had a 641% increase in sales in one year, um, wow. Yeah. yeah, that's 
And so... Which also means now they're super backed by money. And it means that there's tons of knockoff products now because why not jump onto this bandwagon? Yeah. You know, Birkenstocks have a lot of knockoffs <laughs> and Uggs have a lot of knockoffs. And I'm okay with warm, comfortable feet. I'm not okay with dead kids with chronic yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, So here's what makes Jewel really special, uh, if it wasn't already special enough. So it has salt-based nicotine in it which is a form of nicotine that is way more available to the bloodstream and the brain than what you get in the vape shop that's next to all the nail salons mm -hmm. and check cashing places. So this, this is meant to hit the brain and to hit it quickly. Um, so free-based nicotine is what you tend to buy in a vape shop. Salt-based nicotine is what has increased Jules' popularity. And there's 59 milliliters of nicotine per milliliter in a Jewel compared to anywhere from zero to 36 in what you get in the vape shop. So easily twice the amount of nicotine mm. that the kids are inhaling than what the adults are inhaling in their, quote, cessation devices. And that goes back to what you were saying, like they can actually handle a higher rate. That's right. They it's have like brains adult. that are okay with so that. So an adult would actually like, Whoa. Yeah. Right, right. So, you know, one of the reasons why maybe Jewel hasn't taken off in the adult market it's is because it's too much, yeah. right? Um, so this is actually a graph that Pax Labs, who's the maker of Jewel, um, put out as an advertising um, piece. And uh, when you look at it, so this in the y-axis going up and down is the blood nicotine level, and then across the bottom is the time after the first puff. And um, it says minutes in there, but I really think they messed up on their slide, and that's probably seconds, because it takes about six seconds for a puff from a conventional cigarette to reach the brain. So um, that's what the yellow line is, um, is when you take a puff from a conventional cigarette, it takes about six seconds to get this peak rush of nicotine into your brain. When you look at this lower kind of teal colored line at the bottom, that's a traditional vape, that zero to 36 milligram per milliliter free base nicotine. Mm -hmm. The jewel is the pink line. So very much very like inhaling cigarette. cigarette. And what you see with people who switch to other electronic cigarette products is they often move back to cigarette use because they don't get the same punch from it that they do from a cigarette. But Juul has them pretty much right where you would be with a cigarette. Mm -hmm. So um, the other little gimmick that they have is that they put this 5% strength mark on their box, um, maybe to make people think that that doesn't it's mean not, a lot. It's, so probably, it's, like, it's probably not regulated at all. Is it? And it's not regulated. Absolutely right. So every jewel is 5% strength. Um, all that means is that it has 59 milligrams per milliliter of nicotine. That's all that means. I am not going to a uh, liquor store. Mm -hmm. um, like proof. Eight, 8 proof yeah. means 4% alcohol. Um, that's not what this means. For, like, their <laughs> so that this. means nothing. This means Which nothing. is about 90% of marketing. Yes, and and so it may fool people into thinking, oh, well, this is maybe the light yeah. version, yeah. Uh, or it's not that much. Just five um, is a low number. It, it, is. it is in the grand scheme of numbers. It, it means number. it's ninety-five percent something else. Sure, um, but plastic yeah. and whatever else. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, five percent really bad for you. Um, <laughs> so fifty-nine milligrams per milliliter is equivalent to the nicotine in an entire pack of cigarettes. Whew. So um, and because you have benzoic acid in it, you can tolerate doing that. So we easily get kids up to two and three pack a day nicotine habits by this Juul device. Mm -hmm. um, and every Juul pod contains nicotine. The, um, the other thing that the industry um, will say is that, well, you know, we're protecting people from secondhand smoke. Um, but what this is now is heavy metals and these ultra-fine particles that can get into anyone's lungs. Think back to the popcorn factory and what those guys experienced. Um, and so they did a, a really interesting study where they went into bars where they didn't allow combustible cigarettes but people could vape. Mm -hmm. And they went in the morning and they wiped down all the surfaces. And what did they find? Oh, Nickel sorry. and cadmium and lead and uh, three different carcinogens, which are cancer-causing agents, um, that were in just on the surfaces. And so if you were using one of these products in your home with small children, with pets, um, or even around other adults in the car, um, these are the things that those people are either bringing in through their skin, through their mm -hmm. mucous membranes, or into their lungs. Um, we've also seen a huge increase in nicotine poisoning because of these products because they're flavors that are attractive to children. 
And so one teaspoon of liquid nicotine e-juice is enough to kill a toddler. And so you can imagine when kids see things like that look like pop rocks yeah. and and uh, sour patch kids and they it smells good and they squirt it into their mouth even if it doesn't taste good one teaspoon of that is not a whole lot by the time a parent figures out that that's what's happened it could be too late and there has been almost 1800 exposures in just nine months last year that were called into the poison control um, centers in the united states uh, Maryville actually has the, the major center for the entire country which is the poison control center there mm -hmm. Um, so even though these products now require childproof caps, um, I don't know about you, but I can have a childproof something in the bottom of my bag that will unscrew itself, yep. never mind a, a three-year-old trying to hack and it. And three-year-olds are better at childproof caps than most adults. Exactly, <laughs> exactly. So um, when you think about where we are with marketing now, um, in three years, the electronic cigarette companies have increased their marketing by 1,200% um, or 12-fold. And just to put that into perspective, when I mentioned before about the $95 trillion that the state of Tennessee has received from tobacco companies, um, all of that goes into the general budget. It's not used to, to, to fight tobacco or do tobacco prevention efforts. So um, the state of Tennessee, as far as tobacco prevention, since uh, 2013, has only received 20 million of that, and then this year they they elected not to fund the program at all. So there is currently no state money from that master settlement agreement that is working on tobacco prevention in the state of Tennessee. Um, you can advertise electronic cigarettes online and magazines. They're very savvy about social media, um, putting uh, pictures for kids to look at that aren't advertising directly electronic cigarettes, but it'll be a kid doing something else that's cool, maybe riding a skateboard, but the cool jelly thing. That's right, <laughs> that's right. Um, it's the jelly thing we'll all learn. Exactly, um, and the, um, when you look at the advertising, so we're, we're yeah. very much similar to where we were cigarettes. The Marlboro guy, all three of those guys died from lung cancer, by the way. Um, I mean, even the clothing, is similar. I the right blue one really disturbs me here. I'm not sure she has her e-cigarette in there. Um, mm -hmm. And um, you know why switch? Just just move to an electronic cigarette, and you're going to get your freedom back for some reason. This is my favorite. Um, the girl on the left, not only killing herself but also killing her pooch, um, <laughs> because we know that smoking around your pets causes sinus cancer. And then the girl on the right. Um, this green is smoke. it's green smoke, so it's got to be healthy. healthy smoke. Right, and it's got you know those natural oils. Everything green is good. I do have a question about, let's say green smoke. Yeah. I've seen people smoking like, what is that like B twelve oil? Um, yeah. That's so anything oil with oil at mm -hmm. the end of it is really not a good idea sure. to purposefully put into your lungs. Sure. Okay. And even if it sounds vitamin-y, right. um, it doesn't mean that it's actually a helpful or b safe. Sure. Um, so I would say that there's no evidence to support that. Yeah. I just found it very curious. It I didn't is really very curious. know what the draw was, except for like, you can smoke it. But and it's not tobacco. Mm -hmm. Right. Like, does it do anything for you, or does it just exist? Okay. Yeah. I think they, I, I do not have an answer for that one. That's a new one. Yeah, yeah. that's a new one. Um, what the kids are doing is hacking these devices and putting the marijuana oil in them. Yep. And so when they're getting confiscated at school, we're finding it's marijuana oil in them and not just nicotine, or that the nicotine wasn't bad enough. Um, and you can go and look on YouTube or on any of the um, vape store, vape shop sites, and see things like stealth vaping, how to become a vaping ninja, so that you can um, do this in class or yeah, um, helpful. wherever you want to. Yeah. Um, just a quick word about e hookah, which is uh, very similar. The only difference with hookah is that you bubble your nicotine up through water. Um, these are very slick and sexy looking devices that would make me want to think, you know, what is that? That's very curious. Um, when people go to hookah bars, it's usually a social kind of event. Everyone sits around a pipe with a mouthpiece. And one session of hookah is equivalent to smoking 100 cigarettes in one hour. Um, so an incredible amount of nicotine, really horrible for you. And then I love to show this slide to kids because this is herpes, the gift that keeps on giving. So when you're passing your mouthpiece for your vape or your e-hookah or your regular hookah, 
Um, about 80% of Americans are infected with herpes simplex one. It's a really great way to end up with it. Um, and we don't know yet how to get rid of it. So um, we also see other diseases in kids' mouths, like gonorrhea um, or herpes two, which comes from a different mode of transmission. Um, so this, uh, I think, at least gets kids to say, I'm no longer gonna share my baby. And that's what's been an interesting trend with the jewel immune, is it just is a pass around thing yep. now. Yeah, Like, Absolutely. I won't tell it, like, it just has been so socialized. Mm -hmm. It is, that's fascinating. Because like with a cigarette, it didn't seem like that was a passed around as much. Yeah. 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 And when well, I think it was, they, they get kind of soggy. Yeah. You know, yeah. Uh, which is probably part of it. They're wrapped mm -hmm. in paper, so it's a little harder to pass. Yeah. Because there's even like joke YouTube videos now where someone takes a USB drive and pretends <laughs> like it's a tool <laughs> yes. just to mess with people. Right. So it's like that prevalent that now it's a joke. Yeah. Right. Um, I actually had a parent um, of one of my patients who found her son's jewel in the washing machine and gave it back to him because she didn't want him to not have his schoolwork. And then, because uh, she thought it was USB. Oh, no. And when she finally figured out from what I was posting on social media, she was like, oh my gosh, my kid has one of those. And then at, at, I think it was actually at Nolan's Valley School when I presented, one of the uh, parents that was there said that their friend took it to school, gave it to the administrators, who gave it to the teacher, and gave it to the kid because they thought it was his trombone oil, and they didn't want him to not have it for band. Oh. So um, parents, it's very sweet. Got, it's, it is. <laughs> but we gotta get. We gotta, work it. We gotta get. With I'm just what's picturing happening. the kids' reaction. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> That's not mine. That's not my trombone oil. <laughs> well, I will. I will take this. Man. So, so we know that if kids start using electronic cigarettes within a year, they're very likely to end up using combustible tobacco. So, um, this is not something that's just going to stay where it is. Um, and we also know that um, people who are trying to quit by using these products uh, a year from now are extremely likely to still be using those. So 89% of electronic cigarette users who are trying to quit are still using them a year later. So we're just switching one bad package of nicotine and bad stuff for you to a different one. Um, most adults that are using are still smoking, so that's not helping. And um, to date, there is still no evidence that this helps as a cessation device. So there will always be adults who have very closely held beliefs that their electronic cigarette got them off tobacco. And that's great. Um, I can tell lots of stories about how when I get my car washed, it starts raining. And I can believe that with all my heart. Um, but what we know is that the data does not pan out to show that that, that actually helps. Mm -hmm. Um, in 2013, the Department of Health put out an advisory around electronic cigarettes. We updated it last year. It's getting ready to come out hopefully next week with a new update, which really focuses on the risk that we're posing to our youth about these products. And this is kind of where we are now. So back to that youth risk behavior survey. We started asking about electronic cigarettes in high schoolers in 2015. And so from 2015 to 2017, about 40% of kids had ever tried these products. So four out of 10, that, pro that number is probably way higher even just since last year than, than what it is now. We'll know for sure next year. Um, and then at first we were excited because this is the currently used number, so used it within the last 30 days. And in 2017, that number had dropped by almost half, from almost 22% to about 11.5%. And we got really excited for a second. Oh, maybe this is like this passing fancy that you know isn't gonna be a real thing. Oh, no, no, no. So we think what happened is we're not asking the right question. So when you ask kids, when you read the question, percentage of high school students who currently use an electronic vapor product. Yep. And then down here it says, including electronic e-cigarettes, e-cigars, e-pipes, vape pens, vaping pens, e-hookah, and hookah pens, such as Blue and Joy Views, Mark and Logic, <laughs> Vapen Plus, Ego, and Halo, Jewel is not listed nope. there. If I was a kid reading this, I'd be like, oh, I'd be like, well, I don't want to answer this question wrong. We've actually modified our release form that said, like, you can't bring alcohol and tobacco to um, say and jewels. And yes. Because it was not right. computing. And so kids, they may call it their vape, but they're more likely to say they're jeweling yeah. than vaping. Yeah. And so we think the question is wrong. So right now, as we speak, we have a kind of a mini intermittent. YRBS that's going on across our state 
that has these questions, but then has that, have you ever used Joel? Um, so almost see the difference. So, so that we yeah. can see the difference right. and see if, if they're all just using Joel now. Um, and so, and we're actually um, surveying middle schoolers as well because the YRBS is only high school. We haven't had a middle school YRBS in, in several years. So I'm hoping by the first year we'll have some good data from across the state on that and we'll be able to have a better understanding of how kids are interpreting the question mm -hmm. and what the actual prevalence of all of this is. So um, this is whack-a-mole, right? So, so <coughs> Big Tobacco, their goal is to hook people because they want to make money. I mean, that's, that's just the yeah, business. They want to make the money. Um, so now there's a product called Icos, which as of right now is not yet allowed in the United States. It was developed in Japan, and it's a Philip Morris product. So um, Philip Morris is all about getting this into the United States. It has a hummingbird on it, so it's got to be good. It's natural. It is natural. I mean, you guys want to see a hummingbird. Um, <laughs> and it looks like this really cool retro flip phone kind of gadget. So we wouldn't want that. Oh, it's a flip gadget. Yes, it comes in all kinds of colors. And so what this is, is a heat not burn product. So it's a tobacco stick like a cigarette. Okay. And you put it into the device and it heats it up and it doesn't light it on fire. And so Icos and Philip Morris say that that's a harm reduction product. Since it doesn't light it on fire, it's not as bad as a cigarette. FDA was like, yeah, okay, maybe, but we don't really see a need for this product in the United States. So they shut it down for now, but if we think that Philip Morris isn't going to try again, you know, we're pretty naive. Um, so what, um, there has been a study in the interim that shows that this product is actually more harmful than electronic cigarettes that we currently have ours, so hopefully it will stay out of the United States. Um, the really terrifying thing about this device, though, to me, is that there's a microchip in this that captures data. And Philip Morris says that it's there because if your device malfunctions, they want you to be able to hook your Bluetooth from this device up so that they can look at your data so they can fix your device for you to make sure that it's delivering like it should. Well, that also gives them the opportunity to fine-tune those devices so that we give Exactly the right uh, law, you know, length of the drag, amount of the nicotine. Um, Just gives them more data to make a better product. Exactly, exactly. So um, they say that that's not what they're going to use this for. Um, I don't tend to trust them. Um, it may just be my bias, but it's very hard to trust companies. Um, so you know, fighting tobacco uh, in the United States, and especially in a, in a tobacco state like Tennessee is uh, it, uh, we could do nothing but this all day and still have trouble keeping up. Um, I want to give a couple of plugs. So we have a youth uh, movement in Tennessee called TN Strong, and that stands for Tennessee's Stop Tobacco and Revolutionize Our New Generation. And that name was picked by kids in 2016 who wanted to stop the use of tobacco in the state of Tennessee. Um, we have a youth summit every year. We had an awesome summit in Chattanooga last summer with about 500 kids from all across the state that came and learned how to talk about tobacco with their legislators, to get volunteer policies done, to work with their schools, um, all kinds of things, to talk to their peers about not using these products. Mm -hmm. um, we are planning our next one, which will be June 2nd to 4th in Murfreesboro, and we pave the way for these kids to come. So if you have a youth who might be interested in doing tobacco um, advocacy, then uh, they should get with their local health department's tobacco people, and they will get them hooked up for this, and we pay their way, we put them up, we pay for their meals, uh, we take care of them for a weekend, and teach them all kinds of stuff, and then have um, put together a plan for them to go back to their communities and their schools and, and work on this issue. That's awesome. Um, we have a tobacco-free baseball program right now, so Major League Baseball a few years ago, um, said that none of the rookies coming up could use any kind of tobacco product, and a lot of the stadiums went tobacco free, which is awesome. We wanted to build on that and encourage our youth tobacco, or our youth baseball programs to also be tobacco free, as well as their coaches. So if a middle school or high school um, baseball team signed a tobacco free pledge where all of their players and coaches, then we'll send them a field banner that they could put up that says they knock tobacco out of the park and we will give them a five gallon bucket full of Wilson practice balls for their baseball team. Highly coveted. Um, we'll give the TN Strong logo on the side of it and a seat for your catcher or coach or whoever. 
Um, so they can also contact their local health department or I'll give you my contact information yeah. if you've got a kid that plays baseball. We're also going to include softball and then hopefully later this year we'll get football on board with Tackle Tobacco. Yeah. Um, but we hope to take this across all of the sports and really get our athletes invested in health and not using tobacco. And then really exciting is that we have a statewide anti-tobacco media campaign that will be coming out in the spring featuring our TN Strong Ambassadors, which are 12 um, leaders in the TN Strong program from all across the state. They have been photographed and they're gonna be on the sides of buses along with um, some other folks that we photographed to give a message um, really coming from youth about youth empowerment, how they're not gonna be the, the fall guy for the tobacco company, they're not gonna fall for their tricks and that there's more to their life than getting involved in these products. So we're hoping to have a, a really big launch for that in the spring, so look for that. Um, that is awesome. Yeah. There'll be movie theater ads, there'll be digital streaming, there'll be um, social media, all kinds of stuff. Um, and this is my email, michelle.fiscus at tn.gov, and I, I really do respond to emails, and one of the challenges That's that- That's daughter here. Yes, <laughs> quickly too. Yeah, that was awesome. And so one of the things that I want to challenge your viewers is that if, if you went through this presentation that we just gave, I will send this to you. If you have a church youth group, a Boy Scout troop, a, a neighborhood group, a, a kid, and you want to present this information to them, I will send it to you. All you have to do is hit me up with an email. I will send you a presentation like this one, but also a shorter one that's geared more towards kids. Um, and I'd be happy to share that with you. That's the only way that this message yeah. is gonna get out is by doing things yep. like this. Yep. And for people like you to, um, to help spread that message because we gotta get kids to wake up and understand what they're doing. Absolutely, and this has been very educational, which is why you're here. We wanted to do that, and I don't know if we've had any questions coming. Yeah, a lot of people watch, but I have a question. <laughs> um, and I think uh, this may be one that people are asking too. Um, obviously, and so my undergrad was in marketing, mm -hmm. so I understand how marketing can switch your brain um, to really want something, even if you know maybe it, mm -hmm. it's not great for you. But what else do you think might be trending teenagers to this? Why do you think they're coming back to tobacco, to vaping? Uh, I've been seeing a lot of pop use. Mm -hmm. um, what what is the behind all of that? There's a there's a few reasons. Um, you know, certainly if there's tobacco in the home, there's some attraction, and, and mm -hmm. a lot of kids get their first tobacco product from their parents, um, either intentionally or not. not. Yeah. Um, we know that kids that have ADHD symptoms that aren't treated medically may look to nicotine to help try to control those symptoms, and so that's one of the first things that I think about when I see a kid is using nicotine is, you know, how's school going? What kinds of issues do we have? Maybe we need to be screening for those types of disorders because maybe they're trying to fix their own problem. Um, I think most of the time with kids, someone hands them a jewel and tells them that it's nothing but tastes good air. And that 59 milligrams of nicotine per, per milliliter gets to their brain. And, and then that's it. You know, they, that rush yeah. feels good. Yeah. Um, there's nothing negative about it to them. It tastes good, Not feels good, term. doesn't yeah. bother <laughs> their throat. They don't think it's a big deal. Yeah. And so when I do these talks um, around high schools, it's so funny because the parents would drag their vaping teenagers to my talks. Mm -hmm. And the kids are, I mean, they are set that this is, there is no harm in doing what they're doing. And I think that's largely their perspective is that there's no harm in it. Um, with marijuana, there are states legalizing marijuana all over the place, so what's the harm in that? Well, you know, we know, now looking at teenagers who are growing up in Colorado since legalization of um, recreational marijuana, that there's a huge problem. This has a huge impact on youth as far as their driving skills, their study skills, their um, killing off brain cells. There's lots of things with the developing brain and addiction. Yeah. and. Once we have one addiction, it, we're very likely to segue into the next. Yeah. Um, and you know, again, very much a gateway kind of situation yeah. for kids. So um, I think that's driving a lot of it and, and peer pressure. Yeah. Oh, it's, it's not gonna hurt you here, yeah. just try it once you like it. It's harmless, yeah. yeah. And then they do like it, yeah. and then they're stuck. The other thing for parents to understand, and educators too, and I think this is where we're, we're missing it a little bit, is that these kids, 
may truly have an addiction at this point. And so just going to your kid and saying, all right, you're suspended from school, which makes no sense, because then you're just gonna go home and use your jewel. Um, but we're taking it away from you, and we never want to see you do this again. You wouldn't be able to do that to an adult. Right. Um, and so understanding that if you have a kid that's got a pack a day, two pack a day, three pack a day nicotine habit, they may need medical help to get off of these products. And so the TN Quit Line, which is um, 1-800-QUIT-NOW, they can help kids over the, from age 13 and up with cessation coaching and working on strategies for quitting. Um, but you may need to talk to your child's um, pediatrician or healthcare provider to determine what do they need. They might need a, a nicotine replacement product for a little while to be able to get off of these products. Yeah. No, that's definitely, and one other thing I've been hearing and talking with teenagers um, while we're in the schools is uh, it's a coping mechanism, mm -hmm. um, which I think cigarettes seemingly one way or another always have been, right. um, of just like, I'm stressed, this calms me, yeah. which ironically you're saying actually doesn't with teenagers, yeah. uh, which it I think is funny. Like, it does something, it changes things. But it makes them feel better. I mean, they, they get- They, they feel better, they get therefore they think they're, from exactly. It, which they're, I think, misinterpreting as relaxation. Right. Um, but they, you know, it does stimulate a reward center. So yeah. that's absolutely true. You know, it, it's, it's a, a positive it's a crutch. Yeah. It's, yeah. Um, it's, a, it's a destructive coping mechanism. And, and so these are kids that we need to teach other tools to. Yes. And I think that's the one thing that we've been thinking through as a church too, is society has stopped teaching coping mechanisms yeah. that are healthy. Mm -hmm. And so that's why we've seen a rise in suicide, a rise in anxiety, and all these things. And I think what I've noticed with juuling and vaping is it almost seems like a delayed uh, health issue. Mm -hmm. And since teens' uh, brain isn't developed to see the long term of anything, right. um, it doesn't seem to be a problem. Yeah. Whereas some of them have made the idea that suicide, okay, that's bad, but this is fine. Mm -hmm. right. um, both are ways of killing yourself. Right. Right. Um, and so I think that's really fascinating to hear some of what's happening on the health side of that too. So mm -hmm. this has been awesome. Yeah. I don't know if we, we have any more. People that want a copy. Yeah, so we're getting, so, we're getting right. some people. We'll, so, we'll definitely post the email. Yeah, so everybody, I'll post some of the resources you talked about and the different conference information within the comments after we're done. So just to make sure yeah. everybody has access to it. And if you have anything else, I'll add that in there. Yeah, we'll make sure that uh, that your church gets information about the Tan Strong Conference so we can yep. get your youth to come and get you connected with your county health department to, to help with that. Um, and what I may end up doing then is, is sending you the two presentations Perfect. and yep. then you can just like push them out to your congregation with yep. my email. That'd be awesome. Yeah. Well, Perfect. thank you so much for being here. Thanks. Uh, parents, as always, we hope this has been a helpful resource. Uh, this could even be something you sit down and watch with your kids and talk through. Um, I don't know how you want to handle that. Maybe doing your own presentation might be better, too. That would be interesting to think through. At least have a conversation. You know, yes. Sit down, have dinner, yep. have dinner with your kids every chance that you get. And sometimes bringing it up as, hey, do you have any friends? That jewel yeah. comes off friends. better <laughs> than our view yes. jeweling. Yep. Um, you know, to, to talk about someone else and how this is a really bad thing is sometimes a little easier to do with, yes. with your own kids. And the other thing we've learned in developmental theory with brain development is they're not able to think long term consequences, mm -hmm. but they are able to recall stories. So if you talk through situations and possibilities of things that will happen, and this is true across the board, so like, with rape and sex and all of these things, if you can talk through those ahead of time, they can recall that idea, but they can't think ahead towards those consequences until like late 20s now. 26 yeah. is what they're yeah. saying, yeah. you know, that, yeah. You did, yeah. <laughs> I just really answered that one. <laughs> it's just now. I just now know. Um, but yeah, so, so right now the current theory is that the prefrontal cortex, which is where executive functioning happens, um, is probably delayed to 26. It, it, oof, you know, we used to say like 21, now it's 26. It's later in boys than in girls. Um, it, it, it may never develop in boys. We don't really know. <laughs> Sorry. Um, jury's still out. Yeah, jury's still out. So, um, so, you know, they, they are neurologically incapable of understanding some of this. And so your point is, is well taken and a good one yeah. that couching it as, you know, finding a way to, to tell about what's happening right now, mm -hmm. which is that this is changing your brain and making you addicted today. Mm -hmm. um, that, you know, inhaling globs of oil is probably not a good thing. 
and then um, you know telling stories about telling story about the popcorn gag. Yeah. Um, that's that's really helpful. Yeah. Wow. Thank you so much. This has been yeah. really Thanks. good fun. Thanks um, for tuning in. Yeah, definitely. We'll see you guys next time. And uh, remember, if you're part of the Village Youth, we have our Christmas party this Sunday night from 6 to 8 p.m. Uh, we would love for all of the 6th through 12th graders to be there. Invite your friends. Uh, it's going to be a lot of fun. We've played some good stuff. So we'll see you guys next time. See you later.